Welcome to a journey through the history of art. We will travel along a timeline from the caves to the 19th century. My name is Dr. Jean Ouellette. Let's begin by making the familiar unfamiliar. Separating art from craft. Under the patronage of Louis XIV, the painter Charles Lebrun supervised the interior design of Versailles and became the most powerful and important artist in France. He exemplified royal control over the arts in France, even founding Gobelin tapestry works. On the other hand, Nicolas Poussin, who spent his career in Italy, was perhaps the most influential and copied artist in France because he exemplified what would be called the grand manner, suitable for this era of pomp and power. But there was another factor at play, the equally powerful impact of Peter Paul Rubens. Poussin and Rubens stood for a split along stylistic lines in Baroque painting. Poussin's style was characteristic of line, indicating a discipline and control, and Rubens stood for color, suggesting emotionalism and freedom of expression. Now that artists were newly important, possessing significant reputations, quarrels began to emerge among their followers. Should line or color dominate the current artistic style? Should a painting have a smooth or brushed surface, dynamic forms or static forms? Note that these artistic quarrels are not about content, not about the patron. Significantly, artists had become a community, and they separated themselves from craftspeople. The split between art and craft is perhaps more important to our question than any stylistic or patronage issues. How and when did the cleavage between art and craft, so wedded during the medieval period, occur? The answer can be found in two northern European nations, France and Holland. The mere fact that something significant in art takes place outside of Italy marks a permanent shift away from the south to the north. The shift would take a century, but when King Louis XIV decreed that France would make a bid to dominate in the arts, important steps were taken. In 1648, the French Academy was established. First, the king wanted to break the power of the old medieval guilds, still powerful, still in control of the arts. An absolute monarch had to have absolute control over culture. Second, it was important to replace the quality control of the guilds with the quality control of academies run by the state. Under the French king's benevolent despotism, the arts were reorganized. First, the practices of numerous guilds were consolidated. Painting, sculpture, and architecture became united into the Beaux-Arts, and everything else, furniture making, lace making, tapestry making, became crafts. Although all forms of art were under the auspices of the king, a new and permanent division emerged between art and craft, divided along the lines of the non-functional and the utilitarian, between the artist and the craftsperson. Sadly, the division among the acts of manufacture resulted in division along class lines with the hierarchy emerging. Art was done by people who worked with their heads, and craft was done by people who worked with their hands. But we should not assume that the Baroque artist was a free artist. Regardless of their training, their reputations, and their undoubtedly high opinions of themselves, the art makers of the 17th century were hired hands, serving at the behest of their patrons, at the beck and call of their clients. Does the obedience of the artist beholden to a client mean that he or she was complicit with artistic propaganda, bent on domination, or that the artist was politically active, purposefully pushing a cause from a particular religion to supporting a political doctrine? In a word, no. In this world of absolute power, artists who served under despots would do well to keep their opinions to themselves, especially if one were a court painter. Hans Holbein, painter to King Henry VIII, beheader-in-chief, wisely and shrewdly was able to do a portrait of Thomas More, who would lose his head, and many portraits of the king, bedecked in mannerist magnificence. By keeping his counsel and his art, Hans Holbein, a Swiss artist, managed to have a successful career in an English court and keep his head.
Despite the continued lack of artistic freedom, the artist, as we know him or her, had come into being with the French Academy. Art, in the modern sense, was born under the rule of Louis XIV. The artist was now expected to be educated in the liberal arts. A craftsperson was trained in a trade. The artist went through a process of schooling, not training only, that combined an intellectual with a technical education. Rather than the artisan being given proscribed content by a client, the artist was now expected to supply the necessary erudition. Now, virtuosity was, for the artist, a display, not just of technique and skills, but also a demonstration of scholarship. The fine arts were now divided from design.